Hi all, welcome to the video lecture series of object oriented programming. We will see what is Java actually. So far we discussed about different object oriented concepts, then unified modeling language, various diagrams that comes under unified modeling language. Now it's time to look after Java. What is Java actually? So we will see what this Java means, some of the features of Java. They are also known as buzzwords because sometimes in university examinations the questions may be like this, explain the buzzwords in Java. So buzzwords as well as features both represents the same thing. So first we will see or we will introduce Java. The basic definition of Java, it is what? It is a programming language. All of you know what's the need of a language, or why we need language, or why for what purpose we are using a language, irrespective of whether it's a programming language or human language. There are different different kinds of languages in this world, like Hindi, English, Sanskrit, French, German. What's the need of all these languages? All these languages are used for, yes, it's used for communication. That is to communicate a meeting between human beings. So, we believe that computers are one of the most powerful inventory made by human beings, right? So, we need a way to communicate with computers. So for communicating with computers, we must know the language the computers understand. Unfortunately, none of these languages that I have mentioned just now, the computers can't understand any of those. Computers does not know English language, does not know Hindi, does not know Sanskrit, does not know any of the human languages. Why? Because computers are machines. All machines understand only one language. And that is known as machine language or in other words we can say they are the binary languages. When we have to communicate in, in binary language we have to represent everything in ones and zeros because binary means ones and zeros. So if you want our computer to do something we need to communicate in terms of ones and zeros. Is that possible for us? Is it possible for you people to play games by sending messages to the computer using ones and zeros only? It's really, really difficult, right? So we need a way to translate what we have to communicate to the computers. For that purpose, human beings introduced programming languages. So programming language is actually language that the human beings uses to communicate with the computers and Java is one among them, only one among them. There are lots and lots of programming languages like Python, C++, C, JavaScript, all these are different different kinds of languages. JavaScript is considered as a scripting language even though it's a programming language. Okay, So there are lots and lots of languages and Java is only one among them. Okay. And Java was developed by this, as you can see, Sun Microsystems, but now it is under Oracle. It is the Oracle, the company named Oracle who maintains Java right now. And this person, James Gosling, is considered as the father of Java. That is the person who introduced Java into this world. And as you can see the picture alongside, that is James Gosling. Okay. And why we have to study Java? Because you people are computer science engineers. Okay. We can just enquire in the major IT companies throughout the world. And there will be in most of the companies, I think almost 95% of the companies make use of this programming language named Java. That is why our university have introduced this programming language into the syllabus. And for that reason, we need to know how to program in Java. 
now features or buzzwords in java we are going to see what are the different features of java this figure represents all together 12 features of java even though we are not going to explain each and every one of them we will be explaining only the top five features but even then these are the different different features of java java is object oriented Java is simple, Java is secured, Java is platform independent, Java is robust, Java is portable, architectural neutral, dynamic, interpreted, high performance, multi-threaded and distributed. All these are different different features of Java. We are not going to explain each and every one of them, but we will be explaining the top most features of Java, the top five features of Java. First of all, Java is very simple. Why it is said that Java is very simple to learn? Because its syntax is very simple. It is similar to the programming language C. So that means if you people have studied C programming language, then there is nothing to worry about. All those syntaxes, syntaxes means how to declare a variable, how to declare an array, how to write a for loop, how to write if statement, everything is exactly the same as that in the case of C programming language. So there is no need to study anything new, only some, uh, only little bit you have to study new. If, if there is anyone who have not studied C programming language, then also it is very easy because Java is designed in such a way that it is really easy to combat. It's compatible with the human language. Like, how will we add two numbers in mathematics by using the plus operator? The same thing is done in Java also. So, we can relate the statements that we are going to write in Java with the real life examples. The second feature of Java is it is object oriented. I have mentioned this in the introduction video lecture. That is, Object-oriented programming language is actually a category of programming language. So we know that if I show you a pencil and I ask you that whether it is a car, every one of you will say it's not a car because when we say something as is a car, we know that that object must consist of so many properties like it must have headlight, tail lamp, indicators, mirrors, uh, four doors then engine, accelerator, etc. All objects which have which have those properties are said to a car. Similarly, if we say that one language is an object or the programming language, that means that language satisfies certain features, certain properties. So if you want to develop a new programming language, and if the programming language that we have developed satisfies certain concepts, we can say that our language is also an object or in a programming language. Or in other words, we can say that in Java, when we consider everything, we will be considering or we will be viewing everything as an object. In other words, we can say that we can organize our software development into a collection of objects that communicate with each other to produce the output. So when we write programs in Java, we will be writing everything in terms of object. Or in other words, to make it too easy, Java is object oriented because it satisfies all the properties of an object oriented programming language. That is why Java is said to be an object oriented programming language. Next feature is platform independent. Write once and run anywhere. That is the theme of Java. That means once we write a Java program, it is possible to run that program irrespective of the operating system we are using. I hope all of you know what an operating system is. Windows, Linux, Mac, all these are known as the operating systems. If I am writing a Java program in my system and if I am using Windows operating system, the same program can be executed in Mac as well as in Linux. That is known as this platform independency. 
okay and why it happens like that because when we write a java program it is compiled by the java compiler compiler is a program that converts the program written using java programming language in general we can say a compiler is a software okay a compiler is a software that converts the program written in programming language into machine level language a compiler act as a translator suppose we are going to china and we don't know chinese language or suppose we are going to german germany and we don't know the german language what we will do we'll be using a translator for converting whatever we speak in english to german similarly compilers are translators which converts the programs written in high level language like java c c++ etc into machine level language so that our machine our computers can understand what that program exactly needs the computer to do so depending upon the programming language we use there will be a corresponding compiler for example for java we have java compiler for c we have c compiler for Uh, for what we can say for C++ we have another compiler so for each programming language we have the corresponding translator so when we write a program in java it is converted it is compiled by the java compiler and the java compiler will be converting the program written by us into something known as a byte code byte code is having very important or very uh, have very high importance in java programming language because byte code is not actually the machine code what i mean to say is generally when a compiler translates a program written in high level language the output of the compiler will be the machine code that is the code understandable by the machines that is our computers so when we write a program in c when we compile a c program the output that we get that is known as the object code that code is written in machine language that is understandable only by the machines but in case of java when we write a java program and when we compile it by using java compiler the output that we get is known as a byte code this byte code has got a specialty and what is that byte code is actually a intermediary machine language code that means it's not possible for the machines or computers to directly read this byte code this byte code can be read only by one machine that is known as java virtual machine jvm that we will study in the upcoming classes but remember this when we execute when we compile a java program the output of java program output of java compiler is known as the byte code it is because of this byte code java possess this platform independent property it is possible it is possible to java, run the java program on multiple platforms just because of this java byte code so once again i tell you when we first the first step that we had to do in java programming is to write the java program using a text editor like uh, notepad or notepad plus plus then save it using dot java extension then we will call the java compiler the output of java compiler is known as java byte code it's not the machine code object code actually byte code is not accessible by the human beings or the machines directly byte code can be accessed only by one machine that machine is known as java virtual machine so we will see how we can compile a java program how to write a program all those things we will discuss in the upcoming sessions but just now just understand the importance of byte code it is because of this byte code java can be executed in multiple platforms that is why we are saying that java is platform independent and java is secured why java is said to be secured as we can see the difference between a c++ application and java application C++ application is running inside the operating system itself so the applications written in C++ will be directly interacting with the OS but see where the java application is running it is actually running inside 
the JVM, that is Java Virtual Machine. So JVM creates an environment. All the Java application runs within that environment. Java application does not interact with the operating system directly. So our applications are more secure. Now Java is said to be robust. I hope all of you have heard this term robust in one of the Malayalam films, right? And why Java is said to be robust? Robust means strong. Java is a strong programming language. And why we are saying Java is strong? Because of the following reasons. First of all, it uses strong memory management. That is, Java is capable of recollecting the memory that is not used that is not in use anymore that is known as automatic garbage collection so it makes use of memory properly then there are no pointer concept in java we know that in c there is something known as pointers that is not there in java so we can get uh, get rid of all those complexities complexities regarding pointers then i told you about garbage collection that is automatic. That means Java is capable of recollecting the memory that are not in use. Suppose we have declared a variable and we are not using that variable anymore. The memory allocated to that variable will be recollected by Java. Somewhat like that. That's the most easiest way to understand that even though that is not the exact thing. But just think like that. Okay. And there's something known as exception handling. That is in C programming and all if some errors occurs then our program terminates. We don't have the option to correct the errors, right? But in case of Java, there is something known as exec exception handling, by which we mean that if some error occurs, we the programmers can decide how the program to terminate. We can decide how to handle those errors. So because of all these reasons, we can say that Java is robust, which means Java is strong. So we shall conclude now. So we came across what's a programming language and why and about Java also, who invented Java. Then we also discussed about bytecode, then some of the features of Java and why Java is said to be platform independent, why Java is said to be robust. We have discussed only the top five features of Java. Okay, those who are interested. To study about the remaining features of Java, you can just surf the net and study. Okay. I hope all of you have understood the basics of the just an overview of Java. We will continue the remaining portions or remaining overview portion of Java in the upcoming video lecture. Thank you so much.